Let's talk about atomic repositories or how to achieve atomicity when using the repository pattern in a clean architecture JavaScript project. Atomicity means either all queries are going to be executed or none of them. So here's a scenario. You're working on an e-commerce website and you're developing the checkout flow. So what you would do is you take the cart and you take the first product, you check for the availability and if it's in stock and there are enough pieces available of it, you subtract. Uh, the availability from the database and then you move on to the next one and do the same until the very last pr uh, product in the cart. Once you go through that, you then try to make a payment using Stripe or PayPal or whatever uh, third-party service uh, you're using for payments and when, for example, Stripe res returns successful, you go on and create an entry into the orders table. You place an order and there are multiple points in this flow where things can go wrong. For example, not all products of the cart have the availability that the cart is requesting. Or maybe they do, but the payment service returns an error, meaning that it cannot make a payment, so, so you wanna undo everything that you've done at that point. In those scenarios, you don't want to undo everything that you've done until that point manually. You don't wanna take all the products again and then return their quantities back in the database. You need to make that whole operation flow, the whole checkout operation flow atomic. And you can achieve that with transactions. Let me show you a quick demo. It's not an e-commerce website, but it's simple enough to demonstrate the issue. I built this project as part of the clean architecture in Next.js video, so if you haven't watched that one, look for the link in the description below. All right, so we have a to-do application and we can create to-dos, hit enter, but I've also created a feature that lets me create multiple to-dos just by separating them with comma. For example, comma separated to-dos. And there we go. We have the three to-dos created just by comma separating them. But if we go and look at the code, we're going to see that the create to-do use case has a condition here. Actually, let me zoom in. If the length of the to-do is less than four characters, it will throw an error. To-do must be at least four characters. So for example, if we go back and create multiple to-dos like hello world, one which is less than four characters, how's it going, and just hit enter, we'll see the error. To-do must be at least four characters, but if we refresh, we're going to see the two to-dos created, but not the second one, which was less than four characters. So this means that we tried to create a bunch of to-dos, but some of them passed, some of them didn't. If this was a checkout flow, this would leave our database in a semi-valid state, and we don't want that. If one to-do cannot be created, then we don't want any to-dos to be created. In order to prove that, we can look at the trace that I captured a while ago, which is of the create to-do server action. So we can see that we're hitting the controller, the controller is hitting the use case, the create to do use case, and then the repository, which actually invokes a DB query against the database. Again, use case repositories, another use case with a repository, and yet another use case with a repository. So because all of these database queries are being executed as individual queries, so if something were to happen, like we saw in the previous case, they won't be rolled back. So as I mentioned, we can fix that by implementing transactions into our code base. A transaction is a grouping of one or more SQL statements. It can commit all of those queries as a single logical unit to the database or roll them back as a single logical unit in case an error happens. So for example, using Drizzle, we can create a transaction like so. We'll get the Drizzle client and then we'll say dot transaction pass in a callback and through the arguments we'll get the newly created transaction. And then inside, instead of using the drizzle client, we'll just use the transaction and do the update or insert or delete, etc. We can also nest these transactions. For example, we'll start the first one using the drizzle client, get the first transaction, but then we can also create a sub transaction if we want to create a save point. 
So for example, if we want to roll back until this point, but not roll back these previous queries, we can create a save point. And if this was a simple drizzle tutorial, well, it would end here because this is all you need to do. But if your application implements clean architecture and it uses the repository pattern, it's not going to be so simple. So let's see how we can do that. We know that in clean architecture, we got controllers, use cases and repositories. So we want to create that transaction on the controller level and pass it down to the use cases, which will pass it down to the repositories. Okay, so because we can't use Drizzle directly into our use cases and controllers, we have to make a service for that. So let's see how that looks like. First, we're going to create a couple of interfaces. We're going to create the iTransaction interface that defines our rollback method. And then we're also going to create an iTransaction manager service, which defines a start transaction method that receives the callback with the transaction in the arguments, just like we saw from the Drizzle documentation, and also an optional parent that is of the type transaction so that we can create save points. Then we're going to go and implement this service into the infrastructure layer, like so. Start transaction here, we get the callback, which is of type transaction, not the I transaction in this case. We are in the infrastructure layer, that means we can use Drizzle here, and then we'll get the optional parent. In this case, we want to set the invoker to either the parent, if it exists, so that we can create the save points again, or we'll fall back to the Drizzle client. In both cases, we have access to the transaction method, so we'll just invoke that and pass on the callback that we receive. So if we go now into the create to do controller, this is how we use it. So first we obtain an instance of the transaction manager service, and then we just call the start transaction method. We pass the callback as the first argument, and we get the transaction through the argument. So inside we have the transaction and we also have access to all the use cases. In this case for the create to do, which is going to loop through the to do's from the input that were previously split based on the comma and then invoke a use case and pass on the value. As the last argument though, we are going to pass the transaction that we have from the arguments here. And this is basically this part right here from the controller to the use case. This whole block is wrapped with a try catch. So if something were to happen, we are going to invoke the rollback method on the transaction. So even though some of the to do is passed, we still want to roll them back and not create them. Okay, let's get into the create to do use case now. As we can see, we are receiving the transaction as an optional argument. Sometimes we want to use a transaction. But sometimes we just want to directly query the database. And if we scroll down, we are going to see the repository invocation here, and then we pass the transaction as the last argument. So again, let's go to the to-dos repository and see how that looks like. We have the transaction here as the second argument. It's optional. So that we'll do the invoker thingy again. If the transaction exists, we're going to use the transaction. If it doesn't exist, we'll just use the Drizzle client directly. And then in here, Based on the invoker value, we are going to insert the to-dos that we get and then just execute them. The start span is actually a sentry wrapper because I'm doing manual instrumentation so I can look at the traces later. So with this in place, if we were to run this, let's restart the server and go back to the application, hit reload and try the same thing again. New to-do, one, hello world, atomic repositories, two, so one and two are going to fail, the rest are going to pass, but if we hit enter, we're going to see an error happened while creating a to-do, the developers have been notified. If I refresh, we're not going to see the to-dos that actually passed. So this means that one of the use cases threw an error and the controller caught it and it invoked the rollback method on the transaction. So Everything that we've created until that point got rolled back and the transaction is closed. If we look at the trace, we're going to see here's the create to do server action again. We're hitting the controller and this time we also have a create to do transaction. So we're wrapping everything inside of a transaction. We have the use case here and then we have the to do's repository. 
again use case repository use case repository in this case we're going to see an extra post at the end and this post is because I'm using Terso if this was a, for example a Postgres database it's going to be just a DB query but because I'm using Terso I see HTTP client spans in this case this is going to be either the commit command or the rollback command so if an error happens first we're going to see it here as an actual error and then we'll see an additional HTTP client that will send the rollback command to Terso so all the queries in this transaction get actually rolled back looking at the trace we can see that this is actually a passing trace so no errors happen this is going to be the commit command that will let Terso know that everything is okay so that Terso can go ahead and commit all of those changes and actually save them to the database we can also check out the save point example for example we can go to the bulk update controller.ts and this controller implements both updated to-dos and also deleted to-dos so in this case we first handle the updated to-dos but then using the transaction manager service we start a new transaction and we pass the main transaction as the parent transaction so this is going to be a save point in this main transaction so for example if deletion fails we don't want to roll back the updates we want to keep the updates but roll back only the deletions so we're creating save points the same way as we're creating transactions instead we're just adding the parent transaction as the second argument after the callback if you want to check out the code, you can go to github.com slash nicolaflazar slash nextjs clean architecture. And that's it for this video. Uh, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and share it with your friends. I'm going to see you in the next one. Take care.